Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're well. Uh, in 99 days' time, the IOC will meet in Lima in Peru to decide who gets the 2024 20, uh, Paralympic and Olympic Games. So today I'm going to talk to you about the Paralympics and what we did for Rio 2016 to engage new audiences. So I'll start with a little video. Yes, I can, suddenly, yes, I can. Gee, I'm afraid to go on as turned into, yes, I can. Take a look, what do you see? 133 pounds of confidence, me. Got the feeling I can do anything, yes, I can. Something that sings in my blood is telling me, yes, I can. 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 Hey, yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can! Are you ready? I can climb Everest. Yes, I can. I can fight here all night and never rest. Yes, I can. I was just born today. I can go. Bravo, bravo Greg pour le film, on peut vous applaudir. So that was a TV commercial that our broadcast partner in Great Britain, Channel 4, did for us before the Games. So I'll start by explaining who the International Paralympic Committee are, where effectively the Paralympic equivalent of the IOC. We organize the Summer and Winter Paralympic Games, but where we differ from the IOC is that we're also the International Federation for 10 Paralympic sports. So on years where we're not organizing the Paralympics, we're organizing world or regional championships. So in five weeks time, we'll be back in London's Olympic Stadium, hosting our athletics world championships for 1000 athletes. We have an aspiration at the IPC and the aspiration is to make for a more inclusive society for people with an impairment through para sports. So not only do we try organize some of the biggest sporting events in the world, but we want to transform how society deals with disability. And we try to do that through sports. So before I go on, I want to explain what I think is the difference between innovation and invention. So invention is coming up with something completely new. Now, in my view, innovation is doing things differently in order to make progress for the area that you are in. And that's what we've done at the IPC. We've, so we've done nothing new here. What I'm going to present, I think uh, you'll probably all be doing yourselves. But this is something that was new for the IPC. So when I joined the IPC in 2010, 
we had no communication strategy. No one knew who our athletes were, and very few people knew who the IPC were. We had 10,000 people visiting our website a month. So very, very small company. So we came up with a strategy which was to educate and engage people in Paralympic sports through the athletes. And then for Rio 2016, we set ourselves some quite ambitious targets. So we said we wanted to make our website the number one place in the world to get news about Paralympic sport because it was quite difficult for us to get media coverage in mainstream media outside of the games. However, there were Paralympic fans all around the world. So we said, let's make the website the number one place. So we set ourselves a target of 4.7 million people for the website in Rio for 2016. In London, we had 2.7 million. So actually, it was a 2 million increase. We said we wanted to increase the number of people on our social media from 1 to 1.3 mi million. And we wanted to grow our TV audience. So in terms of TV, we'd had a cumulative audience of 3.8 billion for both Beijing and London. And we wanted to break the 4 billion barrier um, for the games. But sporting events are always judged on ticket sales, sadly. You can organize the world's greatest sporting event. But if the stands are empty, that's how the world and the media will judge your sporting event. So you've got to fill the stadia. And then once we'd come up with those objectives, we said, right, how do we achieve that? So we do it by repositioning Paralympic sport as high performance sport. Because a lot of people thought Paralympic sport was just a group of people with an impairment going to a big city and having a nice time. And we said, if we position it as high performance sport, people will engage. So how many people here run? I run. OK, how many people here can do the 100 meters in less than 11 seconds? So we have people with one leg who can run the 100 meters in 10.68 seconds. We have people with no arms who can swim 50 meters three freestyle in less than 30 seconds. That's high performance sport. So we also said we wanted to utilize digital media because we didn't have much budget. We're not a cash rich organization, so we said, we have to utilize digital media in order to make the biggest impact. And because of the lack of budget, we really do need to maximize partnerships because without our partners, we can't achieve what we want to do. So the first key was to come up with our ones to watch athletes. We said we have to engage people in sport through our leading athletes. Now the Paralympic Games has 4,300 athletes. We cannot promote 4,300 athletes. I have a communications team of 10 people. So we had to be really picky on who we chose. So what we did is we worked with every single international federation and developed our ones to watch list for every sport. So for athletics, our biggest sport, we had 50 ones to watch athletes. And for some other sports, we had six. And then we created PR plans for every single sport. Now, we're the International National Federation for 10 sports, four of which are in the Paralympics. The other 18 sports that are in the Paralympics, they are so small that not one of them had a PR person. So we have to take all the sports with us at the same time. So we recruited 50 volunteer student journalists from around the world to work and implement our communications plans for the sports where there were no PR people. And then we took the best volunteer journalists to Rio 2016 as a thank you. We then worked with all our uh, broadcasters, because our broadcasters were saying, hey, we don't know who to cover. Who can you help us? So we always have the media who come to us just before a Paralympics saying, hey, we don't know which athletes are the best ones. So we sent the profiles of all the athletes to our broadcasters and the media. And then we sat down with our commercial partners and said, if you're doing a campaign for the Paralympic Games, these are the athletes to focus on. So what we had was the media, the broadcasters, and the commercial partners all profiling the same athletes. So you saw there with Channel 4, the first advert, broadcast partnerships are key to us. So the advert that Channel 4 created there, we worked with them for a year on it. Every single athlete in that video you saw is a once-to-watch athlete from the IPC. So they were specially chosen. We also worked with Channel 4 to source 
the people with an impairment you saw in the video. There were 160 people, the most ever, in the TV commercial there. The guy who was singing, he was found on YouTube. He was singing karaoke at a pub in Melbourne. We found him on YouTube, email channel four. The next minute, he was on a flight to London and auditioning for the commercial. He now has a record deal in Australia, and he's a, he's a bit of a superstar. One thing that the broadcasters said to us ahead of Rio was, look, our focus is on the Olympics, and that's understandable, well and truly. So we need your help in creating content, because the more content you can give us, the more we can help you out. So what we did in the build-up to Rio 2016 was create 22 90-second long videos explaining each of the 22 sports. The basics, who are the athletes to follow, the rules, classification, when it first came in the games. And then we shared that via Olympic Broadcasting Services, who are the host broadcaster for Paralympic Games, so they could share it with the broadcasters. Each of the videos featured our ones to watch athletes, and we also created different versions so that a, a broadcaster in Japan, such as NHK, could, could use the same script and just change the graphics into Japanese or to Korean or whatever language was necessary. We then worked with all our commercial partners, and we always have a thing in the Paralympics about using other people's money is always the best way. So we sat down with our commercial partners and explained to them our strategy. And luckily, they all bought into it. So every single one of them activated ahead of Rio 2016 with some fantastic campaigns. They all created digital content for us because they, they tied in with the strategy. The athletes they focused on were all our ones to watch athletes, which was really good. And the good thing, Samsung Paralympic Bloggers wasn't something new. It's something we've done for the past three Paralympic Games. Now, everyone at our games is after exclusive content. So we gave 50 of our ones to watch athletes a Samsung phone. And they could record daily video blogs from behind the scenes um, where TV cameras couldn't go. The phones all had special apps which linked into a special FTP that broadcasters could all access. So the result was that when the Rio 2016 opening ceremony finished, the broadcasters could access the back end of the website and download behind the scenes videos of what it's like to walk out into the Olympic or the Maracanã Stadium in front of thousands and thousands of people. So every single commercial partner bought into our strategy. We also worked with UNICEF to help us get the high performance sport message across to a bigger audience by creating this video. Prácticamente igual, lo único que introducimos es un balón sonoro. So that was something that worked really well for us. And I'll be honest with you, that nearly never happened. We'd been working with UNICEF for, for three months on an idea and were really struggling to pull it off. And then suddenly we got a call from Barcelona saying, we've had a cancellation from one of our sponsors on an activation. We have a group of players available tomorrow. Can you get a football team to come to Barcelona? So we managed to get the Spanish national team there within 24 hours. Usually when you phone a team, in the weeks leading up to a Paralympic saying, hey, we need you for a media appearance, and it's in 12 hours time. Usually the answer is no, but when you tell them they can play blind football with Lionel Messi, the answer is yes. And uh, it was a great video which we launched just before the games and we shared with every broadcaster so that they could utilize it as part of their broadcast for the games. So I mentioned that we have 10 people working in the communications team at the IPC. For the games, we go up to 100 people. 
uh, a lot of temporary staff because we create so much content. Because each sport doesn't have a PR person, we recruited a journalist to come and work with us for every, uh, every Paralympic sport, and we created um, 380 stories in 14 days. So a lot of content editorially was going on the website. But in the build-up to the Games, we did a sport week where for a whole week we focused on a different Paralympic sport and informed our audience about uh, the, the ins and outs of it. So at the Games, 380 stories in 14 days, and we worked closely with our digital team to ensure there was an integration of content. So if we were reporting on the men's 100 meters race, we would have a video of that race within the story. We also did a partnership with the IOC, and this was for us a real leap forward. We recruited 14 of the world's best photographers to come and work for us on the Paralympics. We didn't brief them. Their brief was pretty much their own. They just wanted to take some of the best and most iconic pictures they could at a Games, and you'll see some of them later. And we also worked with Getty to ensure that we could get free access to images for a lot of our members and national Paralympic committees. Digitally, we live streamed 680 hours of live content on our website. So when we sell the rights to broadcasters, we always try to keep some content for ourselves. We sometimes do have to geo-block, but in most cases, we can put the content anywhere we want. So we live streamed 13 sports, and we also had a team of people who were sat in a room, and they were editing all the time. So uh, if they saw a moment that was like a world record or a very special clip, we could clip it in real time and have it uploaded to social media pretty quickly. And, 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 uh, and we also worked with broadcasters. So if we saw something that was a British athlete or a, a Japanese athlete, we'd clip it and we'd send it to NHK going, guys, not sure if you've seen this, but this is a really nice social media clip. Um, so we did wow moments, we did moments of the day, and we did a top five moments of the day every single day, which worked really well. We also did uh, a lot with social media partnerships before the games, with Facebook, with Twitter, with Google. Um, and we also, at the IPC, we, ma we manage and moderate 60 social media accounts on a day-to-day -day basis, and we do these in multiple languages. Um, all the content that we created, so when we clipped the races, we ensured that we could upload those to the athlete profiles. So every once to watch athlete we look after, we have access to their social media accounts. So as soon as the race finished, we could upload the race to their social media profile going, hi guys, uh, I'm not sure if you saw the race, but here it is. Um, so it was, it was pretty quick in getting the content uh, up there. These are the results that we achieved in, in Rio 2016. Bearing in mind the, 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 the trauma we had last year going into the games, we'd suspended the Russian team just prior to the Paralympics, and five weeks out from the Paralympics, we were told that the organizing committee had no money to organize the Paralympics. So to achieve these results still, uh, I, I am absolutely amazed at the team that I have back in Bonn. So Google did the Google Doodles for us, some nice Paralympic ones. Uh, Facebook, we partnered with them on the torch relay on the opening day. And with Twitter, if you use the hashtag and then the sport, there was a special emoji created which tied in with the brand look of Rio 2016. And then from a brand point of view from the IPC, if you used hashtag Paralympics, uh, it came up with the Agitos, which is the Paralympic symbol. So that was really useful for us in that respect. In terms of the TV audience, there were 154 broadcasters covering the games, more than ever. And we got to 4.1 billion TV viewers, a cumulative audience. So we, we really increased. But look at it from, say, Athens. We'd gone from 1.8 billion in Athens to 4.1 billion uh, in, in, in Rio, which was a huge achievement. We saw more hours, um, and everything was heading in the right direction. 50% of the 154 broadcasters used the A to Z videos that we had created for them and distributed to them. So that was a real uh, a bonus for us. And now we're amending our strategy, looking ahead to Tokyo, to see what content we can give broadcasters ahead of the games. Channel 4's video was the most shared video, Olympic or Paralympic, of 2016, with 1.8 million shares. Absolutely amazing. We worked with Channel 4 
on a strategy for the launch. So when they launched it domestically, we worked with all our international athletes to share it around the world. And Channel 4 also, for the good of the Paralympic movement, said to other broadcasters around the world, if you want to use our advert, you can do. So in Australia, I think in Korea and other countries, they used the Channel 4 advert to promote their coverage of the games. It was a real team effort. We had 7.7 .7 million website views. Bearing in mind we used to have 10,000 a month, we suddenly got up to 7.7 .7 million. The target was 4.7 million. And there were our social media, we wanted to go from 1 million to 1.3. We got to 2.9 million. There were 2.7 million tweets about the games in 12 days. Works out at 9,300 an hour. We didn't count them ourselves. Um, there was also, we did a partnership with Snapchat one day, so we did a Snapchat live story, and that got 7.5 million views. Via digital media, we reached 1.8 billion people in 12 days of activity, which is hugely important for us because by seeing the games, it helped change your attitudes towards disability. Most importantly, we sold 2.15 million tickets. And if there's any figure I'm more proud of, it's that one. Because with two weeks to go, we'd only sold 200,000 tickets. So we effectively sold 2 million tickets in the final few weeks for the game. So we were absolutely delighted with that, and the people really did embrace the games. And finally, go back to the aspiration of the IPC. It's to make for a more inclusive society for people with an impairment through parasport. And this was what the research said. 79% said Rio 2016 improved their perceptions of people with an impairment. So we helped change the world. It was the athletic performances that did it. And I'll give you some examples. The winner of the men's 1500 meters for visually impaired athletes, he finished in a time that was quicker than the Olympic champion at Rio. We had a power lifter who lifted 315 kilograms. That's the equivalent of two sumo wrestlers or a large Siberian tiger, depending on which you'd prefer to lift. But this is a person who supposedly has a disability and he's lifting 315 kilograms. We had a long jumper who jumped eight meters 40. That would have won him Olympic gold in London, Beijing, and Athens. That's the quality of the Paralympians now. And I will finish by showing you a video from the games. In Vindusau, Rio, a cidade maravilhosa. Vamos lá, chegou a hora. Nossa história é aqui agora. Vamos transformar cada segundo no melhor de nós para todo mundo. Vamos lá, nossa mensagem. This is 
I want to thank Rio de Janeiro. Cariocas fantasticos. You warmly embraced these games and took the athletes to your heart.